All right. Good evening, everybody. It's the last class before Pesach. Um, I just want to remind everybody, Mitzvah Shem, that after Pesach, the class of Monday and Wednesday will start at 8.30, not at 8. So today's class is, is uh, sponsored by the Van Der Veen family um, for Hillel Van Der Veen's Mother, in memory of Hill of Andervin's mother, Misham should have an Aliyah. Okay, two weeks, ago, two weeks ago we discussed about cashing the house and getting the house ready for Pesach. Last week we discussed products. So, what I want to do today is get into the basic things of the Seder, which is a lot of there's a lot of laws involved. We're going to try to move as quickly as possible and cover as much as we're able to cover. So before we get even to the Pesach Seder, um, at a Pesach, if you're planning to take haircuts, you must do it before midday, which is in LA time, 12.52. If you're going to do it after midday, then you have to take a haircut through a guy. A, a Jew cannot give you a haircut after midday. Cutting nails and at a Pesach should also preferably be done before midday. If not, though, you can cut the nails later on during the day on Erev Pesach. But you need to cut the nails before midday. At a Pesach, I'm not talking about the burning of the Chomets, nullifying that we're going to leave and, and move on. Chabad custom is we don't eat anything from at a Pesach in the morning through the sandwich, through Kedach of the second Seder, and I'll explain exactly what that means. We don't eat any ingredients of the marod or the charesis. That's it. In other words, the marod, as far as Chabad is concerned, basically is romaine lettuce and horseradish. So we don't eat horseradish or romaine lettuce besides, obviously, at the Seder. From out of Pesach in the morning through the Kedach, okay, of the second Seder. That means uh, and also the charesis. Now, what is in the charesis according to Chabad custom is basically apples, pears, nuts. Okay? So that means we won't eat apples, we won't eat pears, we won't eat nuts. Starting from Ed of Pesach in the morning through Kedach of the second Seder. Which means that if you want to serve applesauce for dessert the first night at the Seder, we don't do it. Because, again, it's still something that we, we eat in the Chareses. So for the second meal, which is after Kedach, which is the sandwich, then obviously you would be allowed to serve applesauce for dessert. So according to Rabat Kassim, if you want to eat an apple at a Pesach, Monday afternoon, we don't do it. If you want to eat an apple first day of Yom Tif, we don't do it. Okay? Until the second. So we don't eat nuts. We don't eat pears. We don't eat uh, apples. We don't eat... Um, horseradish, and we don't eat the lettuce. All the other things we can eat: eggs, we can eat potatoes, we can eat onions, we can eat everything else from the seder plate. You are allowed to eat at a pesach, and you know whenever it is during the day. The restriction is only on the ingredients of the modern the chalices. Okay, you have to also remember when you finish up. Is the volume low for everybody? No, it's fine. Okay, somebody. No, wrote... it's fine. Okay, fine. That's it. Somebody commented. Um. Okay, so now you have like this. Um, it, just remember before Pesach in the morning, if you have a vacuum cleaner, you have to empty out the vacuum cleaner bag because that has chametz in it. You have to if it's a bagless. Vacuum cleaning, you have to clean out the machine after your last vacuum cleaning, which is chametz. And if it's a bag, you have to change the bag after the last chametz stick of vacuuming. Okay, let's get oh, one more thing. That at a Pesach is the fast of the firstborn. Now, the custom is you go to a shul, you listen to a seum, an ending of a tractate. So then the firstborn is freed from fasting. But you have to remember, though, that when you get up in the morning, until you go to show and hear the seum, you're not allowed to eat because you're still fasting. A firstborn 
has to fast. Or if a father has a firstborn under bar mitzvah, so then the father is supposed to fast for him. You have just have to remember that before you go to shul, you can't have coffee, you can't drink water, uh, because until you hear the sim, you're still fasting. Okay, Mizma Lasaida, in Davening right after Bar Shama, we say Mizma Lasaida, that is omitted from Adat Pesach through the ration of Pesach. Okay, let's come to the, the Seder itself. Now, the Seder itself ideally should begin as soon as possible. Okay, because the kids got to stay up. We don't want the kids to fall asleep. The mitzvah, that there's a biblical mitzvah that night is to talk to the children. You got to tell the there's a biblical mitzvah. So, candle lighting time, Monday night, the first night of Pesach, is 7.12. Chabad custom is to light on, the, on time like you do every year of Shabbos. Now, you make the two brachas, Lahadik Ner Shal Yomtif, and you make Shech Yonu both nights of the first days of Pesach. The last days of Pesach, you don't make. You don't make the Shech on the last two days of Pesach. The first two days of Pesach, both nights, you make the Shech by both by candle lighting and by Kiddush. If a woman is living alone and she's doing the Seder and candle lighting, she makes the Shech only at candle lighting. <laughs> She doesn't make it again by Kiddush. Though the man that makes lights candles and makes Kiddush, the custom is the men make it at Kiddush, the women make it at candle lighting. Now, ideally, the custom is to begin. Now, you're not allowed to begin to say that before nightfall. We will learn it out for matzah. Matzah has to be eaten at night, and therefore the Chacham said the four cups of wine also must be done at night. And because the Seder begins with Kiddush, so therefore the Allah is, you're not allowed to be, you begin the Seder until nightfall. In LA, the earliest time you can begin the Seder is 8 o'clock, preferably 8, 8, 10, 8, 15. But if you have to, you cannot begin the Seder though before 8 o'clock. You're not going to anything. You can't do it. So you start the Seder right away. You make sure the table is set. The only thing that Chabad custom is that we set up after my be right before the Seder is the Seder plate. The Chabad custom is even halachically you can set it up before. But Chabad custom is when you come home after my that's when we set up the three matzis with the Seder plate and and the whole works over there. But you can't begin the Seder until eight o'clock LA time. At my the first two nights of Pesach, Chabad custom is and Siddish custom is we say complete halal after Maidiv, both nights of Pesach, the first two nights of Pesach. Okay, let's discuss a little bit the Seder plate um, because it's a very important thing in the Chabad custom of way, the way we do it. Chabad custom is we have a tray at the bottom, okay, preferably a silver tray, if possible, a tray at the bottom. On top of the tray, we put the three matzahs with a napkin or a cloth separating one matzah from the next. Then you put a covering, make sure it's waterproof, a little bit of foil is good, or matzah cover, whatever. Then what you do is you put the Seder plate directly over the matzah. So you have on the top right is Zeroya, which is Chabad custom is the neck of a chicken that you take off most of the meat and you roast it. Okay, we use a chicken neck. Top left, we have the egg, which is a hard boiled egg. And the Rebbe's custom was he kept it in the shell and he didn't even bang the shell that it should hold. He just put the egg there and made sure that it held without rolling off all over the place. So you have the zareya, which is the neck of a chicken, which is roasted. You have the hard-boiled egg. In the middle, you have the mother. For Chabad custom, for mother, we use romaine lettuce and horseradish. Bottom right, we have the chareses, which again, like we mentioned before, is apples, pears, and um, nuts. And later, we add wine to it. The bottom left is karpas. 
Now, Chabad custom, the Rebbe writes, is to use either onion or potato. The Rebbe himself used onion for the carcass. And again, underneath it, is again the the chazad is called the chares. I mean the matz the maror sorry the maror, which again the romaine lettuce and the horseradish. The reason we do it like this, interestingly, is because this the, the way the arizal by the way the universal seder plate that ninety five percent of the Jewish world does is based on the Arizal Seder plate. It's a Kabbalistic Seder plate. Because we have like this. If you notice, it's right, left, center, right, left, center. Zreya, Beitza, moderate in the middle. Then you have Chareses, Karpas, and the moderate in the middle. So you have the six Svitas, Chesed, Gvorit, Teferes, Netzach, Yisayim. The tray at the bottom is Malchus, without getting into all the Kabbalistic reasons why. And the three matzis is Chochma, Bina, and Das. So you have on the Seder plate all ten of the attributes of the heavenly worlds. So you have the three matzis, which is Chochma, Bina, and Das. And then you have the seven Svitas, six on the Seder plate. The plate at the bottom is, <clears throat> is Malchus. So you have the entire, that's why we do it the way we do it. Okay, now, when it comes to Kiddush, all the mitzvahs of this evening are equal for men and women. Okay, the men have to eat matzah, women have to eat matzah. Men have to drink wine, the women have to drink wine. Men have to say that God, the women have to say that God. Whatever, it's equal obligations for men and women. We'll discuss soon a few differences in practicality but not as far as the mitzvah goes. The mitzvah is equal for men and women, both, both nights of Pesach, by the way, and in the entire Seder. Now, ideally, for the four cups of wine, you're supposed to use wine. The poskim right, contemporary poskim right, the minimal alcohol content for the wine should be at least 4%. You can get 5%, 6%, 12%, 14%. But the wine content should have at least minimum of 4% alcohol. That's what the boss can write. Ideally, when you drink the four cups, you have to drink the complete cup, ideally. Each cup. Halachically, you have to drink more than half to be eight to the mitzvah. If you drink more than half, you did the mitzvah. Custom is, to drink the whole cup. So it's better to have a smaller cup and drink all of it than a larger cup that you're only drinking more than half. The minimum size of a becher of the Kiddush cup for the four cups is three ounces minimum. Three ounce minimum cup and you have to drink a little bit more than one and a half ounces to be eight to the mitzvah. When we're going to talk about eating and drinking, you can't Sip and you can't nibble. If somebody is going to sip the wine, they will not be fulfilling the mitzvah of the four cups of wine. You have to drink it, preferably in one shot. You definitely cannot talk in the middle, but you should drink it, at, if possible, in one shot. But you can't start sipping the wine, you know, put it down, take another sip. You're not eating the mitzvah. And the same thing when you're eating the matzah, you can't nibble on the matzah. We'll discuss when we get to exactly the details. But when you're eating the matzah, you have to eat it a certain amount in a certain duration of time. And it's not a very long period of time. So you can't nibble on the matzah and talk in the middle. You have to eat the matzah quickly. You have to eat the proper amount. You need to drink the wine in the proper amounts. Okay, so now let's start uh, discussing the actual... Say that it's up. So you have the cup that's three ounces minimum. Now, normally during the year, when the husband, let's say, makes Kiddish, he makes Kiddish, he drinks the wine, and he gives a little bit to everybody to drink. On Pesach night, that obviously is not going to work because everybody has to drink the all the entire four cups of wine. You can just take a little bit from the 
and the husband or the head of the house is Becher. So therefore, you could do it in two ways. Either the husband makes Kiddush and all the women will hear and listen to the husband's Kiddush and they'll answer Amen, not Baruch Hu Shmei, just Amen. And then when the husband finishes drinking the wine, you sit down and everybody sits down and drinks their cup of wine. That's one way of doing it. If the women want, they could say the Kiddush on their own. But they cannot repeat the Shechianu because they already said it a candle lighting that would be a repetition of the Shmanasi, I mean, of a bracha that would be forbidden. So you have to um, make sure that either the head of the household makes Kiddush, everybody answers Amen, and then everybody sits down and drinks a cup of wine. Men are supposed to recline on the left side. A student in the presence of his teacher doesn't, unless if the Rebbe gave him permission. Women do not recline. Whatever, not going into all the reasons for everything will never finish. But women don't recline. Men have to recline minimally by the cups of wine and by the, all the matzahs. They have to recline. If they don't, they might have to drink it again, but that's, again, that's not for, for tonight's class. So you make Kiddush, you sit down, you drink a cup of wine, and you recline on the left side, the mendu, and then you're ready for the next stage. After Kaddish comes Urchatz. Urchatz means you wash your hands, but no bracha. Why? Because now we're going to be dipping carpus into salt water. And without elaborating on it, the din is anytime you dip something into liquid, you have to wash on it. Halachically, you have to wash. But because there's an argument about it, we do it without a bracha. So now we're going to dip the carpus into salt water. So we're dipping something into liquid. So then you need to wash your hands, but without a bracha. So when you, after Kiddush, you go orchats, you go to the sink, you wash like you would for bread. You know, three times in each hand, you don't make a bracha. Now I've seen, and I still don't get why people talk afterwards. They want to say they want to show that it's not washing for bread, but that doesn't make sense because the reason you don't make a bracha is because there's an argument that Allah if you have to make a bracha now, but really you're washing for that, and therefore you shouldn't be talking until you eat the carpas. So when you wash your hands for carpas, you don't make a bracha, but you shouldn't be talking until you dip the carpas in the salt water. Okay, so that's Kadesh Urchat. Now you come to carpas. Carpas is, like I said before, the Rebbe writes we use to, to potato or onion. You dip the carpas, whatever you're using, technically has to be something, that a vegetable that's our dhamma. So you dip Let's say the onion, we're going to use the word onion. You dip the onion in the in the salt water and you make a bracha. Now, when you make the bracha of Adama, you have to have in mind that that is also going for the motor that you're going to be eating after Meitzi Matzah. Even though motor you're eating after you wash your bread, but martyr is not part of the meal. It's something separate. So really martyr would demand a bracha, achar, I mean a bracha, a bracha, but if you're adam. So when you do karpas, and you make adam and karpas, you have in mind that it's also going on the martyr. Because of that, when you eat karpas, you can't eat a lot of it. Because if you're going to be eating a lot of karpas, then you're going to have to make an after bracha on it, a very nefashis. Then your adama that you made on the carpus can't go any more for the mother because you already made a bracha after bracha on it. So then you have that whole issue. So therefore, the din is that the Rebbe writes, it's enough to ask to get the kids to ask manishtana. So you eat a small piece of um, of carpus. So what you do is. You take the carpas, you dip it into salt water, our customers three times, and then you make a very pure dumba. You eat the carpas and you do not recline. 
eat the carp is sitting up regular. After Karpas comes Yach, uh, Kaddish Urchas, Karpas Yachas. Now we break the middle matzah. When you break the middle matzah, you take the larger piece. That's why you can't grammatically say you break the middle matzah in half because then you don't have a bigger piece. So you take, you break the middle matzah, but you don't break it three quarters and a quarter because you still need enough kazayat from both sides. So you break the middle matzah, the larger piece of the two, you take away for the afikayman. Chabad custom is that we break that piece into five pieces, corresponding with the five levels of gevuda, and we put it away in a bag for later for the afikayman. It just, the Rebbe brings down that the one time by the Rebbe Rashab, whose yard site was today, by the way, Beis Nissen. Um, one time it broke into six, and he put away the six piece. He didn't use it for the Afrikaner. So there's an Indian of Dr. breaking it into five pieces. In Chabad, the custom is not that the kids steal the Afrikaner. Many places, the minig is that the uh, kids steal the Afrikaner. The reason why they steal the Afrikaner, by the way, is that they should be excited and stay up. Because then they give it back to you by Afikaiman, which is all the way at the end of the Seder, so hopefully it'll be up. In Chabad, the Rebbe writes, we don't steal the Afikaiman because you're basically teaching the child to steal and then you're going to get a present. So we don't do it. So the, what we do is the reverse. The father, so to speak, hides the Afikaiman and the kid finds it. So then you're not teaching him to steal. So the kid finds that became one, and this is supposed to keep the kid up until the Seder, because then he wants to give it back and he'll negotiate a present and a deal, and that's just to keep the kids up. So, and the second half of the matzah, the second piece of the matzah, you keep in between the first and the second. Okay, and then you have, uh, after Yachatz, you have Magid, so you say, hey, lach mo'anya, then you fill up the cup, and then the kids say, manishtam. If we have time at the end, we'll discuss some of the reasons for these things. But Chabad custom of Manishtana, the order of Manishtana is based on the Rambam and, and other, according to Kabbalah. Uh, so we don't say the regular, we don't say, we don't say um, um, the, the order like everybody, first matzah, the martyr, we do it based on the order of what the kids see. Okay, the kids say Manishtana, all the kids say Manishtana. If somebody is has no kids at home, the wife asks the husband. If a guy lives alone, you or a woman lives alone, you ask yourself the Manishtana. Our custom is after the children say Manishtana, the Rebbe writes, our custom is that everybody starts, says it again, quietly. Why do we, the adults, say Manishtana? Because we are Hashem's children and we're asking the child, the Father in heaven, Manishtana Laila Zemikola Laylas. In fact, just in a second to explain the interesting thing, Kabbalah, it says in the Siddha, the Rebbe Siddha write, Kan Haben Shoyal Manishtana. So according to Kabbalah, Ban, Shoyal Ma, Ban is one of the names of Hashem, which equals 52, and Ma is 45, which also equals one of the names of Hashem. So according to Kabbalah, Khan Haban, the level of Ban, which is one level of Yudke Vavke, asks Ma, which is another level of Yudke Vavke. Whatever, whatever that is. Okay, now afterwards we come to a very biblical mitzvah. It's a biblical mitzvah of Magid. Magid is the reciting of the Haggadah. Uh, who exactly wrote the Haggadah, we don't know. There is Rab Sadigon as a text of the Haggadah, the Rambam does, you know, the, but who exactly organized the Haggadah in the way we have now? It's basically, he's called the Bal Haggadah. We don't know exactly who it is. But we mentioned before that the women and the men have a biblical obligation to read the Haggadah. Now I'm going to tell you which parts of the Haggadah are the primary parts which men and women are obligated to say. Now, if you don't know, 
you don't want to, can't say it in Hebrew, you can say it in English, you can say it in any language you want, but you have to verbally, you have to, it's a mitzvah, we got it, it's a speech, okay, to verbally say the Haggad, at least the major parts. What are the major parts? Avadim Ayinu until Cholamarbel's Areza Meshubach. Then you have Metchila Evde Avedezara until the end of Arami Evedavi. Then you have the most important part of the Gada, is when it says Ram Gamliel Amen, Pesach, Matzah, Umarar, and each one of those paragraphs, and then the Bracha of the second cup. So you have the beginning of Adam Ayinu, okay, and then you have Metchila Evde Avedezara, and then Pesach, Matzah, Umarar. Those, contrary to public belief, Dayenu is a beautiful song, but it's not one of the primary parts of Zagad. Yeah, everything in the, the Maril writes, by the way, the Rebbe brings down the Maril, that there's not one thing in the Seder plate and the Seder that is of, not of utmost depth and reason. There is no stam things by the Seder. Everything, every little minute detail at the Seder is of vital importance and very deep, deep aspects of it. So everybody has to say those, at least those parts of the Haggadah. And um, okay, that's that. Now, when you finish the Haggadah, by the way, in the middle, you pour off for the, it comes out to be 16 times. Now, many people, when they, you know, take off for the 10 plagues, they'll take their finger and take out a little bit of wine. Okay, why do they do it that way? Because by the plagues, it says, Etzba Elokimhi. It was the finger of God. Okay, so people do, you know, take off Dam, Sardaya, Kinem. In Chabad, Rebbe writes, we don't. We pour it off, preferably into a broken vessel. So you pour it 16 times and you say Dom, Boesh, the Simre Soshan, then the Ten Makis, and then you have the Tzach, Adash Bacha. Men do it, women do it, but you have to keep in mind you your cup is not full anymore. Your Becher is not full because you poured off the wine. So you have to refill it right away because you need a second cup. You have, the cup has to be full. So then you go and read until, by another thing the Rebbe writes, interestingly, the Chabad custom is when we say the 15 Dayenus, we don't talk in the middle. We don't discuss any, we don't talk, we just say straight the 15 Dayenus through Alachas Kaba Vakaba. Um, Okay, I'm going to say once more what you need to say. See, it's not in my Chabad week. I didn't put those details in. But you have to say, Avadim Ayido until Hareza Meshubach. Okay? You need to say, Metchila Eide Avedezara through Arami Eved Avi paragraph. And then the Ram Gamliel. Pesach Matzah murder those paragraphs with Pesach Matzah murder, and then you know Bechol Dard Vadard until the second cup. Those are the mandatory parts that every person must say when when they recite Tagad. That's the minimal. Ideally, you have to say the whole thing. Okay, so now we do finish the the Haggadah. We drink the second cup of wine. Okay, what do you do after that? Now you we'll do what's called Meitzin Matzah. So you have Magid, now you have Rachza. So Rachza now you wash your hands like you do for bread or for matzah because now you are eating matzah. So you have to wash for bread like you would a regular time during the year. So you wash your hands and this time without a, without a bracha. But before you do that, Kids over bar and bas mitzvah are mamish adults. <laughs> They're full-fledged adults. They have to say that God did. They have to drink four cups of wine. They need to eat a kazayis and matzah. Over bar and bas mitzvah are adults. 
Now, what age should kids do it? From the age of Chinuch, they should. Now, they don't have to drink a whole cup of wine. They could drink grape juice. They could drink a little bit of wine four times. But they have to be educated. And that's the mitzvah of Chinuch. In fact, the whole mitzvah of the night is the God of You have to teach your children. That's what it's all about. It's all about the kids. Okay, now let's me, let me explain something about Meitzi Matzah, which is very important. That's also, by the way, a biblical mitzvah, Meitzi Matzah, even nowadays. Every person, that means man, woman, children, over Baron Bas Mitzvah, children younger, but a certain amount they have to eat. They have to eat a kezayis of matzah. A kezayis of matzah, especially for the biblical mitzvah of matzah, and if possible, also Papi Kaiman, the matzah has to weigh one ounce. Okay, that's the amount of matzah. Meitzi matzah is one ounce. Some people hold its volume, which is a little bit less, but lucheda. From a lot of things, it's mashma that it has to be actually at least the biblical matzah, which is the first matzah, to be a, an ounce of weight. Now, which means as follows: If you have a, a pound box of shmura matzah, you have thicker matzahs and you have thinner matzahs. Thicker matzahs, you can have six matzahs to a pound. Thinner matzahs, if they're very thin, like the Ukraine matzahs, other matzahs, you can have 11 matzahs per pound. Now, that's a big difference. Years ago, an average pound of matzah was eight matzahs. Okay? As everybody knows in America, a pound is 16 ounces. So if you have eight matzahs in a box, each matzah is two ounces. That means you need to eat a half of a shmura matzah. If you have thinner matzah, you have to eat more. If you have thicker matzah, then you can eat less. But you need to eat a kezayis of matzah. Now, normally, let's say Shabbos, the husband makes a matzah, and then he cuts off chal and gives everybody a piece of chal. If he's going to give everybody from the Seder plate, there's not going to be enough. Every person needs a kazayitz, and he needs to be left a kazayitz. So I suggest as follows. Before Meitzi Matzah, everybody gets their kazayitz of matzah. In a little bag. If you want to do it in a very practical way, before Pesach, you get these little scales, you know, these little food scales. And you could weigh the matzah before Pesach at least for the biblical matzah that you need to weight, the weight of one ounce. You weigh them. When you have an ounce of matzah, you put it in a bag. And, you know, if you have 10 people, you make 10 bags. Or you need more because you need different types of matzah. But every person gets a bag and they know that is the amount they need to eat. Okay? So before everybody washes, everybody should already be given their matzah that they're going to be eating. That as soon as they wash and make a matzi, they can start eating right away. Now, the head of the household is left with two and a half matzis. Okay? Now, during Yom Tif and Shabbos, you need two chalas, two matzis. But because Pesach is lechem oini, poor man's bread, so you need to have a broken one in the middle. So now you're left with two and a half matzahs. Okay? So matzi matzah, by the way, is you make a matzi and you make a lachilis matzah. So the head of the household, whoever has a Seder plate, picks up the two and a half matzahs and makes a matzi because you need lachemisha. Two chalas, two matzahs. Then you put down the bottom one and you're left with one and a half matzahs, approximately. Then you make the bracha shekechanu b'mitzvetsa v'tzivanu al achilas matzah. Now you need to eat a kezayis of matzah. The problem is, there's an argument in halacha, should the kezayis be from the top matzah, or should it be from the middle matzah? Which one should it be from? 
So therefore, Shukun Aruch says, preferably, you eat an ounce in the top matzah and an ounce in the middle matzah and you eat them together. That means the one that has a Seder plate is supposed to end up eating two kazais in front of Achilles matzah. But anybody else that doesn't have a Seder plate, i.e. the women, there's no reason why they need to eat two kazaisim. The only reason why we eat two kazaisim is because we don't know if it comes in the top matzah or the middle matzah. But if you don't have the matzahs, you're eating from a bag or a box, whatever, so then you only need to eat one matzah. So now what happens if the band can't eat two matzahs? I mean, two kazaisim. Which one do you eat it from? Again, the biblical obligation is Peter Kazais. So the halacha is you eat it from the top matzah. Not from the broken matzah, you eat it from the top matzah. Okay, so if somebody is only going to be able to eat for health reasons, one matzah, one kazayas, you take the kazayas from the top matzah. If you can, you eat both, but if not, you eat from the top one. Now, when you make the matzah, you also have in mind, in fact, Rebbe writes is preferable not to talk until after Kedach, if it's not pertaining to the Seder. Preferable, but Allah, if you talk, it's fine. It's preferable not to talk from Metzi Matzah until you eat the Kedach, the sandwich. Some people say until you eat Afikaiman, but the Rebbe writes that's far out, we don't do that. Okay, so every person needs to eat the matzah. The men need to recline, the women need to eat, not recline. The issue though is as follows you have to eat the matzah in an, a certain amount of time. Okay, there's amounts ranging in Allah from two minutes to 11 minutes. Okay, what we pass can basically is four to nine minutes, preferably four minutes, but not more than nine minutes. That means when you're eating, by the way, it's not that it's not that it's a limited amount of time, especially if you're eating two kazesa. In other words, what I'm saying is like this: you can't nibble on the matzah, and you can't start. You're in the middle of a mitzvah. You can't start talking. What you see is. People start eating the matzah. Oh, this matzah is so hard. Oh, this matzah is good. This matzah is awful. You can't talk. You're in the middle of a mitzvah. You have to eat the matzah within four to nine minutes. Preferably four, but not more than nine minutes. You have to eat the kazayis of matzah within that amount of time. So therefore, you can't nibble on the matzah. Yes, women have to eat, I said. Women and men are equally obligated in the mitzvahs. I only said that women could eat one ounce. The men have to eat two ounces. If a man can't eat two ounces, he has one ounce in the top matzah. But you have to eat it within four to nine minutes, which means you can't talk. You're in the middle of a mitzvah anyway. What you do is you just, like they say in America, you keep on talking. You just keep eating the matzah and make sure that you're done between four and nine minutes. That is the mitzvah of Meitzi Matzah. Now you have the mitzvah of Mordor. Now Mordor nowadays is rabbinic because Matzah, the Torah says separately, eat Matzah. The only time the Torah mentions the mitzvah of Mordor is when it says, Al Matzah Umredim Yechluhu. You should eat the Paschal and the carbon paste together with Matzah and Mordor. Because today we don't have uh, carbon Pesach, we don't have the Paschal lamb. So martyr nowadays, you have to eat it, but it's rabbinic. You must eat martyr. It's a biblical, I mean, it's a rabbinic myth. So now you have like this. You ate the Kazai Samat, or two Kazai Samat. So now you have martyr. So you don't make a bracha hadam on the martyr because you had it in mind when you made the, it said the hadam on the carpets. You take a Kazai of murder. Now the murder could be either um, we tell we tell, I mentioned Chabad uses both, right? So it should be minimum amount of lettuce. I think they say is eight by ten 
if I'm not mistaken, um, one second, I'm just saying what they, they have a measurement. I don't know if it's eight, not by 11. I think it's eight by 10. That the, the, the model, the size of the letters. Again, it has to be, because it's rabbinic, by the way, it's enough to have three quarters of an ounce of model. So we have the chareis, the horseradish, together with the letters combined together to Eidekazayim. Before we dip the motor into the chareises, Chabad custom is we dip, take the part of the chareises and put it into, mix a little bit of wine into it. What the Rebbe used to do, he used to take the chareises and put it into the, you know, the bottom of the Kiddush cup, there's always wine that spilled over. So he would put it there. And then you take the kazayas of Marod, which could be a combination of both together, half of each, a quarter, and whatever it is. You dip it three times into the Marod. In, I'm sorry, three times into the Chareses. You make, then you make the Baruch HaTashon, Asher Kishanu B'Mitzvah, V'Tzivanu Al Achilles Marod. And you eat it. You don't recline, but you also have to eat it within 49 minutes, which is not hard. Matzah is much harder to eat. But the mother, you have to also eat between four to nine ounces. That applies to men and women and boys and girls over by mitzvah. Little kids should also be educated, not necessarily to have horseradish, but they can have their romaine lettuce. That's part of the um, part of the thing that they should do. Now that you've finished mother, the next part of the seder is kairach, which is the sandwich. Now, why do we have a sandwich? Because there was a great tzaddik by the name of Hillel. And he maintained, when the Torah says, on matzah and b'redim yechlu, means you have to eat the matzah and the motor together with the paschal lamb. So in other words, if you want to call it the first combo sandwich, according to Hillel, you had matzah, motor, and the carbon Pesach, and matzah on top. So his original sandwich, which is why it's called kerach, because kerach means a sandwich. So now what you do is as follows. You ate the matzah, you ate the motor, now you're going to take her. So what do you take? You take the bottom matzah, which you still have complete, it's whole. You take, let's say, half of the matzah, because I assume it, you could be more lenient as three quarters of an ounce if it's, it's a, if it's problematic. You break it in half. You take dry, because Chabad is very crazy about not getting the matzah wet. So you take dry chareses without wine in it. You put it onto the mother, and our custom is to shake it off. And then you put the mother in between the, the matzah, and you say, Cain also hilo bismanchi basim you know, you say that paragraph. And then you eat the kairach reclining. Even though there's murder in it, but the main thing is the matz. Okay? So you have the murder, I mean, the kairach is the matz and the murder together. You eat it reclining. After Kayach, that means you ate this, let's see if you're doing it right. The man had already three, one and a half matzahs plus mother, but you still got to eat a meal and you still have to eat after you came and later, don't forget. So you have like this. Now you're ready for the Shokhanara. Our custom is we begin the meal with the egg from the Seder plate dipped into salt water. You don't have to eat a whole egg. You can eat part of an egg. Somebody can share the egg with you. But the minig in Chabad is we begin the meal of Shokhan Aruch, dipping the egg into salt. You don't say anything. You don't say anything. You just start. You dip it into salt water. How many stalks and letters? I told you it depends. If it has to be, I think it's 8 by 11 maybe. If it's that size, if you have the stalks, the stalks are thicker, so you can have uh, less. You have the leaves, it should be 8 by 11, I think they say. 8 by 10, 8 by 11. Okay, so then, now you have the meal. Okay, so again, 
as we mentioned earlier, you don't have horseradish at the meal. You don't have nuts at the meal. You don't have egg, uh, um, apples. You don't have pears. Okay. Now, during the meal, you're allowed to drink as much wine as you want. You're allowed to drink as much wine as you want. Between the first cup and second cup, no. Between second and third, yes, that's during the meal. Between the third and the fourth, no. And after the fourth, no. But between the second and third, i.e. the meal, you can drink as much wine as you want. It was interesting that Rebbe had a minute that he didn't, when he drank, he did drink wine during the meal, but he would not say L'chaim. Because he didn't want to give it prominence that it should be considered maybe like a fifth cup. You know, whatever. The meal, you eat whatever you want. We're very careful not to get uh, not to get the matzah gebrox, not to get the matzah wet. Um, one thing I mentioned, I didn't mention, I should have mentioned. Both nights of the Seder, you're not allowed to eat roasted meat or chicken. Definition of roasted meat or chicken means if it was roasted or baked in an oven without any liquid in it. So if you have a naloch, it's called a patros sli kedor. If you take a piece of meat or chicken in a pot and just put it into the oven without any liquid, you're not allowed to eat that meat, chicken or meat, both nights of Pesach. During the day, you could. You can make a barbecue. You have a Pesach that could grill. You can make a barbecue for the days of Pesach. The two nights of Pesach, you cannot, you're not allowed to eat roasted meat. Roasted meat, by definition, means any meat that was cooked, heated, baked, whatever, without any liquid. So you have to make sure to put in a little bit of wine, a little bit of water, whatever you want, but otherwise you can't so you can't make uh, a brisket or food that doesn't have any liquid in it whatsoever. Then you finish the meal. I don't understand what the problem is. You, by the way, if you want, you could take a ruler and yomt if you're allowed to measure things for a mitzvah. Okay? You can uh, approximate what is a lettuce, a leaf that's eight by ten. If one's not enough, you take two. I mean, what's, it's a very, very complicated thing to do. You can figure out it has to be eight by eleven. Now, if you're going to have the horseradish, then obviously the leaf could be smaller. Because they both combined to the Kazai of Sumodar. Okay, now that you're at the end of the meal, you better drink as much as you want of water because after the Afrikaman, Chabad custom is Chabad custom is that we don't drink even water until the next morning after the Afrikaman. The only thing we drink is the last two cups of wine. We don't even drink water in Chabad. Um, you're not allowed to eat. You're not allowed to drink anything, but some opinions say water you're allowed to drink. And about the custom is that we don't drink even water after the African. At the end of the meal, okay, now you have to eat African. African is one kazayas. Our custom is the men at least eat two kazayas. One to remember the Paschal lamb and one to remember the matzah eaten with the Paschal lamb. So we eat another two kazayas of matzah. For the Afikaim. If that's tough, one kazayas is enough. So in other words, if you're doing it right, you're eating two kazayasim by Achilles Matzah, one kazayas by Kedach, and two kazayasim for Afikaim. So you're eating five kazayasim of matzah, by the way, it's approximately two and a half matzahs. If you can't do that, you need minimally to eat three kazayasim. One by Metzi Matzah, one by Kedach, one by Afikaim. People that have health issues, allergies, and other Speak to your local competent Orthodox rabbi, and it will guide you what you could do in eating matzah. And the same thing if you can't drink wine or grape juice. I'm not going to get into it now. You have to call a dog, and they will discuss with you what you uh, should do. Ideally, you should drink wine. If you can't drink wine, you can mix wine with grape juice. If you can't do that, you can drink grape juice. But there's a lot of times people, diabetics, can so they have to call a dog and find out what they should be doing. Now, after that, we came in, you have come to the third cup. So our custom is, well, in the later years, at least, that that became the official Chabad custom, the Rebbe filled up the Kais Shilaliyahu before benching. Okay? Before benching, the Rebbe 
filled already up in the Siddur, in the in the Agad, it says to do it after benching. But the Rebbe filled it up, and the Rebbe said reasons why, but not enough. You fill up the Kresha of the Yoho, uh, and then you fill up the third cup of wine, okay, before benching. Now, everybody benches. If you have a Mazuman, you do Rabbi Simavon benching. You know, you have to have, you have to add Yala Viova in the benching. You finish the benching, you drink the third cup of wine. Again, preferably the whole cup, at least more than half. Okay. And then you go what's called hollow nits. So before we go into the fourth cup or uh, hollow air time, the custom is you take candles, at least the women, some of the women take candles, they go to the door to open the door for Eliyahu Novi. The reason really why we open the door is to show that it's Lel Shimurim, it's the night that God guards us. It's not to oh, let Eliyahu Novi and Eliyahu Novi come in through the window also. He doesn't need a door. But the Christ says to show that we're, we're not afraid, it's a night that Hashem protects the Jewish people. You tell the kids that Leon is coming in and watch, he's going to drink from the cup and you shake the table and the cup spills and every, the kids that they're young yet will get all excited that Leon Avi came and drank the wine. So we fill up and then you have a mitzvah of halal nitzvah. We say the second half of halal, well, first two paragraphs of halal we say before the second cup. Now we're drinking the third cup. I mean, the, now we drink already the third cup. Now we're saying the rest of the halal. You have the Hidul Hashem Kitay, you have Nishmas, the whole thing until the end of the Seder. The end of the Seder, we drink, the, we make again very pure Gafen, even though we made it already. But because every cup is different, every cup is unique. Okay, the, I told you. As no, Kenazic no, custom, as Kenazic custom is, <laughs> as Kenazic custom is that we make a separate bracha on each one of the four cups. We drink the fourth cup. Now, the fourth cup is preferable to drink the whole thing because you have to make an after brach ala gefet. If you drink three ounces, then you make ala gefet. If you didn't drink, you can't. Then you only drink an out one and a half ounces. Then you can't make the bracha ala gefet because you didn't drink enough. It will be a bracha name. Then we say, Lushana Babi Rushalayim, and the Seder is over. Then we pour back Keshel al into the bottle. The customer we sing Keliata uh, and all that. Now, like I mentioned before, we don't drink anything, not even water. Uh, halachically, you could drink water. Our custom is that ever writes, we don't even drink anything. The first night of Pesach, when you go to bed, you have uh, the only you'll, you'll only say the first paragraph of Shema. To show that it's um you know, Hashem watches us. If you read Shema and Shul earlier, then you read all three parashiyas to make sure you read Shema in the proper time. As far as the next day is concerned, okay, davening is chakras with complete halal and, you know, creates a teira, musaf. But you have to be very careful. You're not allowed to do any preparations whatsoever for the second seder until one hour after candle lighting. That means in LA, let's say the first night of Yom Tov is 7-12, candle lighting. You don't do any, you're not allowed to do any preparation for the Seder until 8-12, 8-10 if you want. But you can do a 7 o'clock, you can do a 3 o'clock and after, you can't do anything. People that have Chabad houses or a lot of people they can call it up and find out what the guy would be allowed to do before not everything. There's a few things the guy could do in preparation from the first day to the second day. But you're not allowed to wash any dishes. You're not allowed to do anything from the first day to the second day. You can't set the table. You can't nothing. You can't put things into the oven. You're not allowed to do any preparation whatsoever from the first day to the second day, to the second night. Second night, the Seder is exactly the same as the first night, except now we begin counting Sphere Sa'imer. Chabad custom is to count Sphere Sa'imer in Shul at the end of Maidit. Many people, by the way, have a custom that they count Sphere the first night in the middle of the Seder. 
but that's not our custom. We do it at Maida. Again, second night candle lighting is Shachianu. Lavla Gnei Shiyam Din Shachianu. The kid is the Shachianu. The kid, the seder is exactly the same as the first night. All the dinam of the first night apply to the second night for men and women. Except then after Kedach, you want to sit. You can serve applesauce for dessert. You can have pears, apples, nuts. You know, all, all those things that we said, the horseradish. Uh, in other words, if you want to serve a uh, gefilte fish and you want to have horseradish, this first night you can do it. The second night, you can serve horseradish at the, at the meal if you want. Um, that's basically it as far as the Seder goes and the first day. Now, you can't do any preparation. Svira um, again, we start saying Svira Sa'imer on the second night of, of Pesach. We start counting the Aymer. And um, that's basically it as far as, in a nutshell, you know, in 55 minutes, we covered what should be taking five hours. Well, we did it in 55 minutes. By the way, if anybody wants to get the Aloha newsletter, you can go to jewishbeverlyhills.com. There's a Aloha newsletter going step by step for the say what you need to do. Um, you can get it on jewishbeverlyhills.com and go to the whatever. I didn't even know how to do it myself. But you can get it there. That's where you're supposed to get it. Um, okay. The, um, if anybody has any questions, you could write them in now. We have five minutes left. I do want to mention like this. The second night, Matzah Yom Tif, in the Shmanasi, we start, we stop saying the same Talamata, and we start saying the same Brach. The first day of Pesach at Musaf, we bench Tal, which means first day at Musaf, first day of Pesach, I mean, first day of Pesach is Tuesday, Tuesday at Musaf, we begin saying murdered Hatol and no more Masha Baruch murdered Ageshim. Mitzar Yamtif, instead of saying the same Talumata uh, Levracha that we say during the winter, now we begin saying the same Bracha. I just want to mention again um, we don't eat any nuts, even though you put walnuts in the Chareses. The custom is all nuts we don't eat on Erev Pesach because it is one of the ingredients. Of the Chareises. I want to mention again that Mir Tashem, after Pe there's no classes now until after Pesach. Next Wednesday night, we're having the Fabrengen and Shul in honor of Yeralef Nissen with a dairy uh, meal with Rabbi Reishi Kessel and Fabrengen. I don't know if we'll be on Zoom or not. I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out. But, uh, but after Pesach, the Monday and Wednesday night classes are going to be starting at 8.30. It's, it's impossible because of Mincha Um, Okay, does anybody have any other questions? If not, if not, we will wish everybody a caution for Lechem Pesach. Hashem mm -hmm. should help that we should um, spend this Pesach and Eretz Yisrael with Mashiach. Amen. Amen. Kabbalah, one more thing. According to Kabbalah, um, the first night, the matzah we eat is called the food of faith. And the second night is called food of healing. Now, the Rebbe had a chassid, who was a pharmacist. Those days, you know, they didn't have pharmacy like we have today. He used to make their own. So he used to take leftover matzah from the Alter Rebbe on the second, from the second night, and he would grind it up. And every medication he made, he put a drop of a crumb of matzah from the Alter Rebbe's matzah of the second night that it should be uh, healing. Uh, people that are going away for Pesach, you know what, I don't have time now to do it, but if you're going away for Pesach in a nutshell, you have to sell your chametz if you're going to a later destination. If you're going to New York, you have to sell your chametz in New York. If you're going to Israel, you have to sell your chametz in Israel. I personally will be making a mechiras chametz Sunday, a day before the regulars for people going to Israel or Europe or New York or whatever. So you just tell me about it, and I will sell your chametz a day earlier. But if you're going away for Pesach, the night before you leave, if you're not leaving Sunday night, you're leaving, let's say, next week, the night before you leave, you have to do B'dikas chametz in one room, which means you take the cleanest room, take a candle or a flashlight, do B'dikas chametz without a bracha, no 10 pieces of bread, and then you fulfill your obligation of B'dikas chametz. Okay, 
again, if anybody has questions, they can ask their local uh, competent Orthodox rabbi. Uh, and until then, everybody have a great Shabbos. We should only hear good news and it should be good all over the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Good Shabbos.